My name is Lee Bauman. I'm speaking on the spiritual and supernatural elements of quantum physics for the non-scientist, light and relativity. In this first slide, we see that visible light encompasses only a small percentage of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Physicists refer to all forms of electromagnetic radiation as photons or light waves. To better appreciate the nature of physical light, we need to, for a moment, examine some of the basic properties of waves. We will start by looking at sound waves. We know from Sir Isaac Newton and from subsequent experiments that have proved him to be correct that if a sound wave is traveling at its known speed of 1,088 feet per second and we as an observer are traveling in the same direction as the sound wave at a much lesser speed of 200 feet per second that our perceived relative speed of that sound wave will be measured at a decreased velocity in relation to our own speed of travel. In this instance, sound is represented by the long red arrow and we as the observer are represented by the shorter green arrow and our perceived speed of that sound wave is measured at 888 feet per second. In the case where a sound wave is traveling directly toward us, again traveling at 1,088 feet per second, and we as the observer are still traveling at 200 feet per second, Newton shows and experiments verify that our relative observed speed of that sound wave is now measured at 1,288 feet per second. In the instance of light, we find that physics is literally turned on its head. Here we have the instance where a light wave represented by the top red arrow is traveling at light's known speed of 186,000 miles per second. Again, as with the sound wave in one of the previous slides, we as the observer are still traveling in the same direction as the light wave, but at a fractional light speed of 100,000 miles per second. As predicted with sound, Newton would have guessed that the observed relative speed of that light wave, in comparison to our own observer-based speed, would have been much less than light's actual speed. Newton would have guessed light's relative speed to be measured at around 86,000 miles per second certainly not 186,000 miles per second, which, as it turns out, is the actual measured speed of light. This was a totally unpredictable measurement as it would have been deduced by Newton. The fact that light maintained its original speed of 186,000 miles per second was found to be incredible. Experiments have verified that indeed this is the case. If we look at the instance where light is actually approaching us at its same light speed and assuming that we as the observer are still traveling at 100,000 miles per second, Newton would have guessed that the perceived relative speed of that light wave to be around 286,000 miles per second and not the actual measured speed of 186,000 miles per second. Hence, we can deduce that the speed of light is constant and never changes. In fact, the conclusions made by these measurements are that the speed of light is unaltered despite our observer-based speed, and that the speed of light remains unaltered despite our observer-based direction of travel. The only way for light to maintain its consistent speed despite changes in our observer-based speed and direction are for three things to change. Einstein was the first to predict these changes in his special theory of relativity. 
he showed that in order for light to maintain its constant rate of speed, the observer must change. Consider, if you will, that when it came to observing sound waves, it was always the sound wave and its speed that changed, not we as the observer. The reverse is true with light. Light has a consistent velocity despite our observer speed and direction of travel. So instead of the perceived speed of light changing, instead it's us, the observer, who changes. The things that change for us as the observer are three in number. The first is that our intrinsic clocks change. Our time slows. Indeed, if we could ever achieve actual light speed, the speed of our clocks would actually stop. Our observer-based spatial dimensions decrease proportionately to our speed in relation to light, and our mass also increases. Einstein summed it up best when he concluded that time and space are modes by which we think and not conditions in which we live. What we shall see in future presentations are that physicist descriptions of physical light are incredibly similar to descriptions that we have always reserved to describe God. Thank you.